Hi, panels. So my question is, are we taking a huge risk in achieving net zero with 100% renewables when the global renewable supply chain is currently under pressure? Should the nuclear ban be lifted to allow for early work development to ensure a sufficient backup energy option if the renewable pathway could not get us to net zero? And, Hasleser, I should point out you're a committee member of the Australian Nuclear Association. Uh, Minister, let's start with you on this one. Well, thanks for your question, Hasleser, but uh, we're not going to 100% renewables anytime soon, but we are going to massively increase our renewable share, as we absolutely have to if we are going to play our role in arresting climate change. But to your question about nuclear, I can't think of a worse fit for Australia than nuclear energy. It's extraordinarily expensive. We don't have a nuclear industry in Australia, so we'd be starting from scratch. There's no plan on what to do with the waste. It's very slow to build. Uh, there are only two small modular reactors at the moment anywhere in the world, one on a barge in Russia and one in China, neither of them working commercially. I don't know why, with all our abundant renewable energy, which sure has to be stored and we need the transmission and we need to do all the work that we're doing that, but with all our abundant renewable energy, the best renewable resources in the world, I can't think of a worse thing to do than to then take the most expensive form of energy and try and retrofit it in to a country with so much cheap renewable energy. It's just the wrong plan for our country. So, Chris Bowen, you've released some figures today, some costs your department's done on what you think it would, it would cost to replace the coal mm. fleet with uh, nuclear. I suppose cost is really up for market to work out if it's too expensive for them. The, the question's about the ban, though. W will you ever lift the ban? No, because it's a massive distraction. I mean, this is a big job, to be fair, um, to lift our renewable sort, uh, energy. We wasted 10 years debating about whether climate change was real and we had 22 different policies. And now, frankly, the side of politics which told us we didn't need to worry about climate change is now the side that says they've got the solution and it's nuclear. But it's a massive distraction. It would take a lot of our public debate, it would take a lot of government energy to go down that road when, in fact, we should just put aside the last 10 years of denial and dysfunction and get on with the job of getting more renewable energy into the system, storing it, firming it when we need to at night. That is the best plan for Australia. But just coming back the to the question, what's the reason for the ban? Well, well, why, why do you want to keep the ban? Well, the ban was put in by John Howard. So why do you want to keep it? Well, because it's a massive distraction from the task we have in front of us. And, uh, you know, we have renewable energy investors right around the world lining up to invest in Australia. We've just got to get on with that job. I'm not being knocked over by nuclear energy uh, investors. $387 billion would be the cost to replace the coal-fired power in Australia with nuclear. That's an enormous amount of money. It's $25,000 per taxpayer, if the taxpayer funded it, or indeed those proponents would need to know they get their money back and they get it back from Australia. Ted O'Brien, is that the cost? Do you agree? Well, no, I don't, David, and I think the, <coughs> the last time Minister Bowen released some economic modelling on Australia's energy system. It was to predict a $275 reduction in household power bills. Well, what's and your cost we, know, well, we know where that went. And so yes, well, I don't think today he, was today he to releases Ukraine, a new set of economic modelling. And if he can't get the modelling right for his own policy, then... <laughs> He certainly can't get it right for a policy that hasn't even been released well, yet. Well, Ted, okay. Ted, which bit do you disagree Sorry, with? Minister, Sorry, Minister, can, can let's, I just, ask, let's, Minister I, let's just let Ted O'Brien have a go. Now, you've I'm had very... the shot about the $275, right? So yes. if, if that cost on nuclear power is wrong, what is the cost? So it depends on which way you model it, David. You see, I think what's most important is to learn the lessons from overseas, where they say the most important method when it comes to an energy system planning is a total system cost. Because when we open up our bills at home, what we see is the total system cost in that bill. Now, it's only with that methodology that you can get the right mix of technologies, a balance of technologies in a grid to get the prices down. So what's now, the cost? Now, that, that is why, that is why Canada, um, uh, is using that sort of a methodology. Ontario, the province of Canada, they have up to 60% of nuclear energy. Now, their electricity grid is one-tenth as dirty as ours, or to put it differently, ten times as clean. Their energy prices at home, they're less than half of ours. OK, so what's the cost in Australia? Just 
Can you clear that up? What would it cost in Australia? If, if I do? gave you the specific cost, I'm preempting the exact design well, just, and policy. Do you, but do you, know, you, do you know what the cost is? I, I can give you the range, David, because I think that's fair, because oh, okay, the, the, range, the range is where people are looking. So Chris Bowen came out today suggesting that it's around about $8,000 a kilowatt, right? $18,000 a kilowatt. 18000 Now, um, and then he, he said that 18100 is going to apply for how many? 71, 71. Reactors. 71 yeah. reactors. So, and then it's, it's far more expensive than, than the others, he says. So the experts predict that the cost is somewhere around about, some say six, but let's say 8000 The absolute upper end is 18000 And even if you accept the 18000 at the upper end, even the... Gen cost report he's taken it from says that the costs come down by the number of units you do. So that's but a, he, he hasn't okay. made that assumption. I'll just jump he's, in he's, here. That's, a, that's a big range. Just keep Surely you're up. not committing to nuclear power without knowing the cost. Absolutely not. And here's the thing. So what is the cost? And, 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 and here's the thing, David. We, we haven't announced our policy. But do, you don't know. You, the, you, you will know be. The cost, you'll be you? one of the first ones. You'll be one of the first okay. ones today. <laughs> however, however, you've given us a very big range, though. Surely you must have an idea what the cost is if you're committing to this. Yes, we do. And but what is I'm, it? Not, I'm not going to pre. I'm not going to pre. I'm not going to preempt our it's policy. It's a secret, is it? But he, here's, here's the thing. <laughs> it is. <laughs> until until we release our policy, David, I'm not going to get the specifics. But have you worked it out or not? We are doing the modelling right now. So you don't know. And that we are doing the modelling right now based on actual data. Based on actual data. What does that Different, mean? Well, what, what, good question. What Chris Bowen, <laughs> what Chris Bowen has, has worked his out on is hypothetical. And what, but you're the one committing to it. We are the one formulating the policy. He's the one who's released okay. the modelling. David. So, so, so GE, Itachi, uh, Westinghouse, no, um, New of work Scale, it, but... all of okay. these I visited. We're getting data from. We are basing it on real data, not on a hypothetical that Chris Bowen okay, has. But you and when we release the policy, you, you still don't know the cost, though. But it doesn't cost the same Nikki, in Australia as it does overseas. I mean, it's just... Nikki, uh, what, what is the, the cost in your view? So, well, I am not an expert, so I look to the experts. And like the Minister, I look at the CSIRO report, which was done in conjunction with the Australian Energy Market Operator. I don't think anyone in this room, well, there may be one, would know more than they would on this subject, quite frankly. They don't model and the, so, Nick. They, they do. It. They, there isn't... they outsource it because they don't yes, know. But they, um, well, that's not entirely correct. Not they, they, they have their own just experts there. And they make... But here. the cost just, is, can just I just get the... We'll the, the average yeah. cost at the moment is around sixteen to 18000 the average cost, OK? If we have um, solar, it's 1000 per kilowatt um, and its wind is double that too. Mm. There is no universe. And if you have your modular, your small modular reactors, which don't exist anywhere and haven't been proven, you still don't... I would love to think that there was a silver bullet to the climate crisis. Nobody's saying I it's do... a silver bullet. Well, you kind of are. No, we're saying... It's, 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 and, you're and... saying this is essential to solving the climate Nikki, crisis. Nikki, we're not. We're saying what can we I, need I... is an no. all-of-the-above-approach, not just one technology. Okay. Let me... So all wait, of the but ahead. why would you take, as a minister, why would you take the very most expensive... You said you want to take a whole-of-system approach. Yes. You need to take into account distribution, generation... Correct. ..as well as the retail costs that go towards everybody's energy bill. Correct. Why would you take one that is going to make the generation cost something like eight times or possibly 16 times as much as renewable energy will, will cost. Will is yeah. itching to get in yeah. here. Yeah. Sorry, guys. This, will. The cost... This is clearly getting us nowhere. The cost of nuclear is clearly highly contentious. And you know what the best way to find out the cost of nuclear energy is? It's to lift the nuclear energy ban because here, at here. that point... Also, because also. at that point... You can actually see nuclear reactors, what they will cost, because at this stage, no company is able to propose for a nuclear reactor to be built in this country. And to what the uh, Minister for Climate Change and Energy said about it being a distraction, well, look, we should have all options on the table. And what I would say is I'd bring out... This is the ban on nuclear energy. It's a single A4 piece of paper. And if the government was serious about reaching net zero and having a guaranteed path to net zero, well, they'd get rid of this. They'd get rid of this prohibition. And I think that is how you solve climate change, is having all options on the table. That's how you end the climate wars. And I think it's particularly disappointing when 
I think everyone had great hope when the Prime Minister came out and said that this government would end the climate wars, and that's myself included. I was really optimistic for that. But when you look to a government which has prejudices against certain solutions, I think it's disingenuous to claim that the climate wars are ending. And, you know, I'm not going to let the coalition op off it either because, well, obviously the nuclear energy ban was introduced under the Howard government, like the minister said. I think we, this should be a uniting issue around nuclear. The facts are in. You can see the global evidence. And I think it's time that, at very least, Australia considers lifting the ban on nuclear energy. Allegra. OK. I'm going <laughs> to... Thank you. Um, I think, honestly, the truth is, I think the, the sort of obsession around the ban or not is actually a distraction. Because, you know, the, the real reasons we don't have nuclear right now, and I think, and we sh you know, they are not the short-term solution, is basically it's too slow, it's too expensive, and the small modular nuclear reactors, which, you know, which many people are saying are the right things to do, frankly, are not commercially available. So I, I'm, a, I'm generally an open mind kind of a person and say, you know, if over time we can get the cost down, if over time you can um, you can get we see these small modular nuclear reactors broadly around the world and they've rolled out and, and done that if they can come down in terms of timing you know we should consider but that. to Will's but point aren't they matters for the market to decide why, why does the ban need to be there because I think this is about honestly this is the action we need to take is in the next 10 years I think the the ban is is honestly irrelevant the action we need to take though is in the so next you wouldn't 10 years mind if it's irrelevant you wouldn't mind Getting rid of the ban? I think we should mm. always consider options on the table. Right. But the options, the nuclear is just not the right option right now. And I think that, honestly, if the coalition wanted to overturn the ban, they absolutely could. But it will make no difference to what we need to do now because we know that climate action is urgent. It's in the next five, ten years. And it will. there is no estimate that is we can bring in nuclear that fast, even if it okay. was on time, even if it was the right thing to do. The... Um... The Minister's costing today is based on 71 of these small right. modular reactors. Uh, that's to replace the existing right. coal fleet. Uh, right. Can you give us any clarity, Ted O'Brien? I'm assuming you wouldn't need that many. Are you talking about fewer than 71? Well, um, again, David, I'll, I'll have to be vague because we haven't released the, the policy. That might be though. more than 70. No. So, so, <laughs> here, so here, here, here's, here's what the Minister's assumed, right? He's, he's assumed that um, you replace retiring coal-fired power mm. stations with nuclear. Fair assumption, because that's what a lot of the experts say. What he's failed to point out in the modelling he did was advice to even the Department of Energy in the United States talks about the reduction in capital cost because you are leveraging the existing infrastructure in doing so. He also um, fails to point out that one of the beauties of these small modular reactors that is you can have yet. multiple mm. reactors on the one site, um, which so means there's still different reactors. So, so, so therefore, still different there, reactors. so therefore, so therefore, um, you can leverage the one site and that one um, set of connectivity. The other thing I'd point out, David, is we've been very clear from the get-go. This hasn't changed. Where I have said on behalf of the coalition. We're looking at next generation, zero emissions, nuclear energy. Only generation three plus and beyond. Generation three plus and beyond. Now, that means because they've got passive safety features and so forth. So mm. is there generation three plus existing today? Absolutely there is. Are the small modular reactors, the generation three plus small modular reactors, that's not new technology. That technology has been around for decades. So it's what just, they, in, it's okay. just in a smaller version. So what do they cost then? I mean, can we come back to some clarity? Well, again, around... it depends on who you ask, David. Like, uh, and here's why I don't want to give you a straight answer on it. If, if you ask <laughs> some of the some of the vendors, well, I'm not sure about the joke there, mate. But if well, you if you ask some of the maybe the give vendors, a straight answer might be the way one, forward. <laughs> they will say one billion dollars. They will say one billion dollars. Some of the vendors, one billion US dollars per per now, reactor. Per reactor. Now, the reason why I don't use that figure is. That is not the only cost that goes into it. You, you've got the cost, the overnight capital cost, mm. and then you've got the owner's cost. Mm. The figures that Chris Bowen have come out with, I mean, I think he's just made them up because it doesn't make sense. But it I, doesn't make right. sense. Well, and and Canada, Allegra, to your point, you know, you might say it's expensive 
Canada says otherwise, we've United got, States we've got says otherwise, United States. Solar and wind US resources in the world. Plus the average but nuclear the average nuclear storage cost is two hundred and forty percent above what it was predicted to be. You know, that's the average overrun of You're cost. talking about the storage the average, of the and, nuclear and waste. the average nuclear um, building cost is hundred and twenty percent cost overrun. And that's over across many, many, many Okay, nuclear well that reactors. brings us in fact. So to, this um, is the cost. I think it 